Welcome everyone to Jerry World, AT&T Stadium in the home of the Southwest Classic and fans have been filling this place up for the past few hours, wrapping up the tailgate and fired up for what ought to be a sensational clash. This matchup today, part of the lifeblood of the sport, a rivalry game where the results will be remembered for a lifetime. As we'll see a squad from the SEC, the Arkansas Razorbacks, taking on the 24th ranked team in the land, the Texas A&M Aggies. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. The Razorbacks will boot it away to start the game. He'll bring it out. It's Owens. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. The Aggies offense will get the first swing of the game. These rivalry games can really get the blood pumping, and we'll see who can manage their emotions best early. Everyone's been waiting for this game, right? You know both of these teams have had this game circled all the way back to the beginning of the offseason, so you got to be able to play under... Afterburners coming! He's inside the 40, the 20, and he's still on his feet, but finally out of bounds after a terrific run. Big play in the running game for this offense. This guy strikes fears into the hearts of every defensive coordinator, David, with that speed. If you give this guy any open grass, man, he's gone. It's just silly. Look at the angles, people trying to catch him, but he's got so much juice, he can outrun those angles and make enormous plays. Didn't take him long to get into the goal-to-go -go package. Here they are on first down. To the air, it's Wegman. Let's it go to the end zone. And he's got it. Touchdown, Aggie. They can use this first score to sort of set the tone, guys, in this rivalry matchup. Man, doesn't this feel good to come out, score early, get the crowd involved, get the nerves out of the way, Palmer, when you're playing in a big rivalry game? Yeah, and I feel like momentum is always a big thing in any game, but in rivalry games, it's that much more important because everybody is going to feed off that first score now. They'll try to add another to their lead. And he's got the extra point, and it's 7-0 to start this one. You want to see quick strike ability? It was epitomized there. Two plays, 80 yards, touchdown on the board. Kickoff team has the ball teed up in there about ready to go. Returner's going to try to see what he can get. And the coverage team able to wrestle him down. So Arkansas's offense will try to get something going with their first possession. This matchup on the outside, Jesse, a big play weapon for the offense, a shutdown corner for the team. They say big time players make big plays in big games, so who gets the best of this matchup? That's going to determine the game. That I means such a fun chess match. How much are they on each other during the game, the head to head matchup that everybody wants to see? And that would be the definition of first down success. Putting yourself in a good position. It's second and inches. I can do whatever I want next. I can take a shot down the field. I can run the football and get a new set of downs. Like, nice first down execution. Quarterback on the keeper. Nice move there. Brought to the ground, but not before getting it up for the first down. There's an example of the offense taking advantage of all of the attention the defense is giving this outstanding running back. Remember, he's one of the best in the game. They're expecting him to get the football. So the quarterback says, you know what? I'll just keep it. No one's keying on me. I'm going to get upfield and find an explosive play. Quickly to the tight end. They'll rip off eight on that play. It's second and two. 
Just a quick rhythm throw there and really good use of the tight end. Yeah, good use of the big fellow. I mean, go through your progressions real quick. You can't find anything. Get the easy game. Don't take a shot down the field all the time. Take those shots later, but take those easy, wide-open opportunities to get some positive chunks. A quick pass on the fly motion. And the Razorbacks get enough for the first down. Yeah, just went with something very easy, very reliable. Flip it forward, let your receiver do the rest. I only got to get a few yards. Nice job, nice execution. First down. The Razorbacks are on the move. Trying to find his man on first down. Catch in the middle, it's Armstrong. They'll get him down, but not before he crosses the 50. He's down to the 49. The Hogs getting it done through the air, evoking memories of Ryan Mallett. And that's what the fans of Arkansas want to see. They've always got that physical ground game. They always want to have a little bit of balance. And when they get that balance, they get that offense cooking. They get everybody pretty excited. You might even get a woo pig swing. From the gun, he leaves it with the bat. I know you want to prepare for every game the same way, but there's just something different about rivalry games, Jesse. It's because, Reese, I think players are aware that games like this define your legacy as a player. Your record in rivalry games is something that people are going to talk about for years and years down the road. You have got to show up and play your best football in games like this. They make the stop at the 37, but not before. He's got 10 yards and the first down. And after giving up that completion, guys, I wonder if the defense is going to decide to stay in zone or maybe mix things up a little more man coverage, maybe blitz. And the Razorbacks will have it first and 10. He'll do it himself. We'll give him a couple on that one. Second and eight coming up. Well, the QB decided to keep it on that one. And listen, if you had his athleticism, you'd want to keep it too. Almost every time they run these types of option plays. But he's just going to have to do a good job of understanding when to hand it off, when to pitch it, and try to keep this defense on their heels and read his keys. He's got a lot of talent. Just got to make sure he's making the right decisions moving forward. Quickly complete. And he goes out of bounds after coming up with positive yardage there. And these quarterbacks have to really trust their wide receivers that they're going to be disciplined and run to the right route when they're throwing that ball to the outside like that because those corners are sitting there on the inside. And the worst thing that can happen is to miss inside and that quarterback can go in the other direction. He'll keep it himself. Moving deeper into enemy territory. Move the chains. It's first down at the 27. This quarterback does an outstanding job in his preparation, watching film and understanding when he has to pull the ball on these types of run plays. Great job keying on the defender and quickly making the right decision to pull it and then go get north and get the first. On the ground, it's Jackson. They make the tackle after he gets two down to the 25. This offensive line better figure out a plan for this deep tackle. He is tough to block with one guy. You might want to start double teaming him. He's going to be a problem moving forward. You saw all of his ability on that last one. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Moving the running back, trying to get the D to tip its hand. Unloads to the wideout. And it'll be incomplete. This defense is physical in pass deep. Uh, missed opportunity on offense. QB and receiver just not on the same page there. They run into a bit of trouble here. Third and long from the 25. And the last thing they want is to get knocked out of field goal range. Got a man. It's Armstrong. And they do a really good job. Not as easy as it looks to get those blocks. And he picks up the first down. We asked earlier this week, who's your favorite receiver? And of course, he said the open one. But we know who he really wants to go to on third down. The best one. <laughs> I mean, I think the open one, obviously, the politically correct answer. But you want to find the guy that you got that great chemistry with. You know exactly where he's going to be. You got that bond. And he'll run it into the end zone. Touchdown, Razorback! What a nice start for this offense. The throw game getting working, getting the touchdown pass. This quarterback getting a little bit of confidence. This passing game getting in a rhythm. Nice start for this offense.
Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And it's up and good. That is what they mean when they say ball control. A 14-play touchdown drive. And they finish it up with a 15-yard scoring toss. After that latest answer tied things up, just about set to kick it away again. On the run from inside his own five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Just gets it to the 28, pick up of one. Man, those physical runs take a toll. It might not be a big game now, but down the road, third, fourth quarter, late in the ball games, they tend to turn into bigger runs. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Back to throw. It's Wegman. Fires to the middle. He's got it. They'll move the change after he gets it to the 43-yard line. Plays like that. He's fitting in with the Aggie legends, Christian Kirk and Mike Evans. And that's when you've seen them just high-flying, fun, tempo, making plays down the field, having those go-to guys those AM offenses were always fun to watch. Texas AM going up tempo. The give to the back. And a pickup of eight opens a world of opportunities on second and two. We had a barn burner the last time these two teams played, and no reason to expect anything else between these two bitter rivals. Attention to detail, and I think the sense of urgency, David, in a game like this just goes way up. And I think managing the emotions in these type of games, you, you know last year was a classic. Now you're trying to form this year's identity of this team and go out and get a win in a big-time rivalry game. And that's what makes this defense so difficult to run against. They've got guys up front that just push offensive linemen backwards. They basically push the blockers right into the lap of that running back. Lining up to convert third down. They'll try to pick up the first through the air. Caught close to the marker, it's Muhammad. They'll move the chains. Good execution on third down. They've got it at the 41. And on that third and short, I don't think he was unhappy to see that zone. Nope, it was a great job by the offense. Hey, see where the holes in the zone are? Sit down. You only need a little bit of yards on this third down. Get the conversion. Move the sticks. They'll run it from the gun. And I think they'll give him two on that one. Second and eight coming up. That's a really good job by the defense. Wrapping them up, getting them on the ground. Take away that run game. Make them one-dimensional. Put them in passing situations. Really good job by the defense. After picking up a couple at second and eight. Dropping back, it's Wegman. He's right on target. Tough, physical, hard-nosed running gets it to the 34. My old coach said you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never complain. They've been able to control the ball. This is the seventh play of the drive. It's third and three. They'll try to power their way ahead. Didn't get much. Picked up a yard, and that will leave them with fourth and two. They're happy enough to try to take the points as the field goal unit heads out. They'll have to generate power and some accuracy. A 50-yarder from the left hash. It is true as he puts three on the board. And with that, they've taken the lead. How nice is it as a head coach to have a kicker like this? It makes these decisions on fourth down so much easier. Just strut him out there and let him stroke it through the uprights. So they were able to put up a three spot on that last drive, and now the kickoff team out there as they prepare to put the boot to leather. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Hogs send that offense back onto the field. 
Davey, they love to do what they did last time and put this one in the end zone. You ain't lying. They did a great job. Oh, and he gets downfield for the big catch. And they'll move the chains and get it to the 47-yard line. There have been many days for the Razorbacks where big plays from the quarterback came by running like Matt Jones, but that was a beautiful throw. Man, I played against Matt Jones. Played him in the SEC Championship game my sophomore year. We beat him 30-3, by the way. Just side note, but just dynamic player. But you're right, always ground team, ground and pound. When they got that ability to keep some balance, these teams can open up and Arkansas can have great seasons. From the gun, running back gets to give. And excellent vision to find running room there and make a really good pickup before the defense put a stop to it. Boy, well, shows you his speed and his power on that run. As far as I can think back to, Arkansas football always comes down to being able to run the football on offense. It's about grinding and wearing the opponent down. They always seem to be able to recruit outstanding athletes at that position. This guy is no different. Oh, he's so hard to get on the ground. He's got room. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. Well, that was a dart right there. He's going to give Arkansas a chance because in the old days in the SEC, you had to run the football if you were going to win championships. Today, you better be able to get it done through the air. When you think of all the great play callers in this league and all the Heisman Trophy winners this league has seen at the QP position in recent years, you better be able to do it throwing the ball. This guy, I think, gives Arkansas a chance with his arm. Man, what a spectacular play by that defensive end to come up with the tackle there. And you see those guys get off the football so fast. Most of these guys are 250 to 275 pounds, but they get off the ball fast, low. And the offensive linemen, they have no chance to stop those guys as quick and as fast as they are. And the defense wrestles him to the ground. I like the decision by the quarterback here. Just get the ball out of your hands, get it to your playmaker. A lot of times he'll dance and make even bigger plays than he did here, but it's still a positive game. Balls at the 22, third and short coming. Can the defense force him to settle for a field goal? Texas A&M has the lead at the end of the quarter. One period in the books, and let's take a look at the stats. They are lined up and ready to go and get things started here in the second. Third and short from the 22. Is the field goal unit getting ready, or is this already four-down territory? It's caught. He steps out of bounds, but it will be enough for a first down. Really nice job there by the quarterback, understanding that it's zone coverage on third down. You're going to have to find someone working into a soft spot, get the ball out of your hands quickly, make an accurate throw, and pick up the first. Well done. The Razorbacks have it with a first and ten. Hand off from the shotgun. Relying on that running game as they threaten to pick up a four down to the 13. Operating in the red zone here on second down. To throw, it's green. Let's it fly! And he was trying to cash in in the end zone of this red zone threat, but it's incomplete. What a play by the defender there, guys. In his own end zone, the offense has taken a shot, and if that defender was just one step behind, that would have been a touchdown. But the hit forces the incompletion. They'd love to pick up this third down and get a fresh set with first and goal. On third and long, trying to have a big completion here. And good coverage and better hands on that shot to the end zone. Got to give the defense credit on that play, taking everything away, forcing the incompletion. Now it's decision time. Fourth and short, and you're in field goal range. What do you do here? They'll try to salvage a field goal on this drive. And this one splits the uprights. With that field goal, guys, we're all tied up, and there we go. All 
tied up and just about set to kick it away. Here he comes from inside his own five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Texas A&M has it back on the offense, ready to go to work. Got it in the middle, it's Green. And he might be known for run fits, but that was a sure and heavy tackle on the tight end. A nice job by the defense there tackling the catch and smothering the tight end. They know this offense is going to try to find him in the passing game in a lot of different situations that time. Perfect coverage and nice job bringing the big guy down. Not easy to do. They're going to run it. Not a lot of room, but found his way ahead for two out to the 26. And offenses want to continue to feature the run. They want balance. Even if it's not super successful, you can take it a little bit at a time just to keep that defense honest. Facing a third down and short from the 26. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. Really nice job to get it past the sticks. Pick up the first down at the 30. And I don't care if I get it by 2, by 20, by 30, by 40. I just, I just want to get the first down, understanding the situation, understanding where the sticks are. Doesn't have to be sexy, but I got to make sure I get to that stick, get to the first down mark. It'll be first and 10 from the 30. Running back searching for a hole. Pretty good job of running to get two there to the 32. And the defense doing a great job committing to the run. When you commit to the run like this, obviously, give up some plays in the passing game, but you got to stop the run first. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. Not much he could do there. Does pick up two to the 34. Sticks on third down. On the run, it's Wegman. He's got the tight end. He's brought down, but there's a flag on the play. Let's see if it stands. Just an ill-advised play by the defender to make contact with the quarterback after the throw, and it cost his team. Used the play fake, now to throw. Got him downfield. And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. Sometimes your tight end's a safety valve, and sometimes he's your go-to receiver. And the offense knew right away it was the primary target. It was where he was going with the football, because you know you get a little bit of suck up from those linebackers with the play action, and you feed the big fella. They want to run this quarterback. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Last play was a near disaster. Now dealing with second and 13. They think they can create space here with a run to the right. And the defense stops him just short of the first down. Maybe needed a few more chain links to move the sticks. Well, the defense wasn't expecting that. They had a lot of guys back into coverage. That was second and a lot of yards to go. And they got caught off guard. Not enough guys in the box to control that running back. Tight quarters deep in the red zone. But they can pick up a first down without scoring. Third down. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. That is a great play by the defensive end. The most athletic players on the field play defensive end. Yes, you heard me, Jess, Reese, exactly what I said. Great get off, great job getting in the backfield, making the play. And now on fourth down, they'll try a field goal. Absolutely perfect. And they've regained the lead. Lining 
enough to kick it off after that last drive, put a three spot on the board, and now the defense will try to shut him down. On the move from inside his five, and he pops it up inside the 20. The kicking team's got it, and they take the ball right back. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Nowhere to go, and not much to show for that one. Well, they're able to complete the hitch throw against man coverage, and hey, the quarterback's got to be able to get it to him quickly because he knows that defender is going to be driving on the ball. So, really nice job, not hesitating, getting it to him, and then he gets what he can get after the catch. Going to work on second down in the red zone is still some ground to cover to pick up that first down. Coming after it. Got rid of it just in time. That pass is incomplete, and they're probably fortunate that it wasn't knocked free for a fumble. Yeah, it felt incomplete because he did a great job of getting to the quarterback. He's in the pocket. Yeah, he's, he's comfortable, but you get in there and you get a hit on him. Now he feels it. Can't throw the football. Can't follow through with his arm motion. Nice job by the defense. To the air. It's Wegman. Fires to the end zone. Oh, and it's a pick. He threw it right into the double coverage. And he's brought down after the pick, but not before putting his offense in business. Well, the defense comes away with the pick there with their nickel personnel. I think moving forward, if you're on offense, when you see that personnel on the field, you want to run the ball against it because you got smaller guys out there. Or if you're going to throw, think about quick screens outside when you have tight ends flexed on the perimeter, bigger bodies blocking smaller guys. And Arkansas ready to send out this offense. Always good to get points on a drive, David, but chip shot field goals can leave you a little empty. And I think it's great to get points, but the great teams get touchdowns in the red area. you got to get out there this time and execute a little better on this drive. You're absolutely right, David. Generally, the best red zone offenses are the ones that run the ball the best. So let's see if they can be a little bit more physical on this drive. They got nothing on the last play at second and ten. On the run, it's Jackson. Finds a good hold there and gets four to give them a little breathing room out to the five. Just a simple power play. Again, not sexy. Run the ball up the middle. Physicality, offensive line needs to assert themselves. Run block what they love to do. This pays dividends down the road. And picking up the first down will be nice here, but also important, get some cushion for the punt team. He couldn't get close to the marker. Got three yards, but it'll be four and three. The run game just has not been working for this offense all game long. We saw it on that last play as well. Just not getting enough push up front on the offensive line. It hasn't been physical. And the Razorbacks will punt this one away. First time we've seen their punt team this afternoon. That's a perfect example of not settling for a fair catch. Pick up whatever yardage you can and help out the offense. Off the play fake on first down, the throw. And they're on him immediately. Down goes the quarterback. When it's a play action pass, that quarterback, he really has to sell the fake. He can't tell his offensive lineman's getting beat right away while he's selling the fake. He had no shot. play on first down. That's what a defense always wants. Looking to pass. It's Wegman. They get to him as he throws. That pass is incomplete and they might be fortunate. It wasn't knocked free for a fumble. It'll be third down. Well, the offensive line has got to give him at least a little bit of time to survey the field. He had no chance that time getting hit almost immediately after he got the ball. I'm not positive, but that first down marker might be in the next county. They're bringing heat. Took a shot as he threw. Another incompletion on third down. Every defense in the country talks about getting offenses in predictable third and long situations where I can bring on more speedsters and I know the pass is coming so I can have more success. Texas A&M will have to put it away. First punt of the day and he'd love to lock them up close to their goal line. 
No return possible on this one. It goes out of bounds, and they'll mark it right around the 30-yard line. The Hogs send that offense back onto the field. Trying to start the drive with a pass. Got it set up on the outside. Not a whole lot of room there on that screen pass as it just never developed. This offense will screen you in a variety of ways. They'll throw receiver screens, tight end screens, the running back screen also a big part of what they like to do like you just saw there. Got the completion on the last play. Still some work to do on second down. He's looking to throw. He's going for it all. And it slips through his fingers incomplete. That would have been a huge gain if he could have squeezed it. And the offense clearly saying, we want to take those deep shots. We want to be aggressive. And I, and I think that's a good strategy because it makes the defense really honor what you're going to do. And just missed a little bit, but I wouldn't be surprised if this offense finds a way to come back to some of those deep ones. Didn't have much of a choice, just had to throw that one away. It'll be fourth down. It's so nice when you know it's third and long, you know a pass is coming, you worked on it all week, get your feet set in the sticks, understand that quarterback's got to be rushed, hit him off of his spot. Nice execution by this defense. The Razorbacks send out the punt unit. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. No return coming here. Fair catch is signal for and made just shy of the 30. Texas A&M has it back on the offense ready to go to work. They'll have another opportunity to extend this lead after punting last time, David. And it's important to put that punt behind you. It's, it's over. Let it go. Get back to what you were doing and build this lead. Yeah, and defense, obviously, they won a few downs uh, that last drive. So we got to put them on their heels here. Maybe mix up a few personnel groupings and try to show them some pictures they haven't seen. Looking downfield, it's Wegman trying to get to it. And the quarterback is snowed under. Just a great job defensively, making him go through his progressions, and he really didn't have time to do it. And that's exactly what you do in zone coverage. You drop in your spots, you read the quarterback's eyes, make sure you take away that quick stuff, and a great job rushing the passer and getting the sack. This is a third and long. He's looking downfield to throw. Lost one deep down the right side. And he makes the catch inside the 25. And he's still on his feet, but finally out of bounds after the big run for this offense. Well, after that last play, you can see how electrifying this guy is and how special he is after he makes the catch. If I'm on offense, I'm trying to find a lot of ways to get him touches in this game. And the Aggies have it with a first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. And will cruise into the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies! And I like the running backs finish. He sees the hole, explodes through it. He knows where the goal line is. Gets in the end zone, gets six. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And with the extra point, they're now up by a touchdown and a field goal at 10. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they capped it off with a one-yard plunge. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. And he takes this from inside the five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. And Arkansas ready to send out this offense. 
The deficit here is just 10 points, David, so a chance to answer here. Plenty of time left in this football game. No need to panic. This offense just has to put a couple drives together. And listen, the defense will get this back and get some stop follow and get you the football back. And I think, I think here too, David, you have an opportunity to keep the pressure on the opponent. Yeah, they just went down and scored, but you score here, and this game's still tight. You keep their feet to the fire, so an opportunity here to keep applying that pressure. To the air, it's green. Gets away, fires to the wideout. And that pass is intercepted. And he will roll into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Look, I know it's only the second quarter, but we're starting to see a pretty significant gap develop between these two teams right now. No doubt. When your defense is scoring, your offense is scoring, good things happening for your ball club. This defense on point, reading their scouting report, making big plays. PAT unit on the field. And with the extra point, they now have a three possession lead at 17. They'll kick it off and send that defense right back out there to try to score again after the pick six. He'll bring it out, it's Sategna. Knocked down right at the 25, and I guess he breaks even, bringing it out of the end zone. The Hogs send that offense back onto the field. These guys have taken some body blows in the first half, and now a chance to do some. And the Heat will get home, and the quarterback goes down at the 17. Not sure exactly what led to that, whether the protection wasn't right or the quarterback just didn't see it, but the result was a negative play and a sack. Well, one thing I do know is that quarterback had no chance to get that ball downfield. That pocket was breaking down, and it was breaking down quickly. There were just too many bodies in that backfield for the QB to make anything happen. They come to the line hoping to get some of that yardage back from the 17. Scanning the field, it's green. Shoots it to the left. He's got it. They bring him down, but a solid pickup to put them in position to pick up a first down. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. In the gun, looking to throw on third down. Caught over the middle, it's Haas. He'll move it up to the 37-yard line, and it'll be a first down. There's got to be a sense of urgency for this offense right now. They're trailing. They're going to be kicking off to open the second half. So they need points. They need to go tempo. Maybe that last first down gets them a little bit of confidence. And the Razorbacks headed quickly to the line. They'll throw it on first down. Pressure coming. He'll pull it down and run. He turns this into a nice game and gets down to avoid the hit. We've got a timeout here late in the first half, and they'll try to get more points on the board before the break. The Razorbacks have it with a first and ten. He's looking to throw it. Got his man downfield. And they'll finally bring him down after he rips off a huge play. I know it's early in the game, but defensively after that play, you know you have to tackle the catch. When this guy gets the ball in his hands, he is so dangerous after the fact. So it's okay for him to make catches. You just got to get him to the ground quickly. That big play has this defense reeling, and now they'll snap it first and 10 from the 14. It's complete. Takes it to the house. And I tell you what, that passing touchdown, man, that should spark this whole team. Like, the comeback is more than on now. Like, they got the touchdown. They cut into the lead. You, you want to get a stop and go into the half, get all the juices, all the excitement, and be like, listen, the passing game's rolling. We got this. The comeback's in full effect. Ready to try the point after. And 
and the PAT will draw them one point closer. So that scoring drive took only six plays, and they top it off with a 14-yard pass for the touchdown. So they've got the lead down to 10 here. A little more interesting as they're set to kick it away. He'll start the return inside his five. And the returner will be brought down. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Now you find out just how much of a gunslinger you are. Will you roll the dice here late in the half, David? And you know the defense is going to be really, really conservative, so I think it's an opportunity to be able to take a shot, see how much of a chunk you can get before then you decide really, Jesse, how you want to finish the half. You just can't turn it over and throw a pick if you're the quarterback here. You have got to be so smart if you're going to be aggressive with your decision-making. To the air, it's Wegman. A little screen to the running back. Shakes off the defender. And he goes out of bounds after a nice pickup on that one. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors at our halftime update. Guys, on paper, we wondered what this matchup might look like. And through two quarters of ball in the Southwest Classic, we've been treated to a fun one. And it'd be easy to say these two offenses are glad we've hit halftime based on their respective performances. It would also be accurate. Turnovers and sacks have told the story so far. And you've got to believe the play calling has been the issue, right? Time to shred those game plans and just get back to basics. That said, let's get back to the stadium and our guys to start up the second half. will boot it away to start the second half. On the run from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage and he'll be stopped at the 17. And Arkansas ready to send out this offense. They had a really productive first half, but in a game like this, they better keep it up. You know, at, at halftime, the offense and defense separate, and they kind of go over their own adjustments. You know the offense was saying to themselves very quietly, guys, we're not going to stop it. we got to keep scoring if we're going to win this game. So the pressure's on them here in the second half, David. Yeah, and you get the ball first. And so it's been a high-scoring first half. You get to go out here now and make a statement. Start this half, say, listen, we're going to keep scoring points, and then maybe help some, alleviate some of that pressure on your defense. Hand off from the gun. They pick up half of it. It'll be second and five. I, I like it. Just frustrate the defense. Get that five to six yards. Make them honor the run. Make them know that you're willing to run the football and run it effectively. And the Razorbacks come to the line in the hurry up. Unloads quickly. He's run out of bounds, but he's got enough to move the sticks. The Razorbacks getting set on first and ten. A little misdirection and the handoff on the counter. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. A little pre-snap eye candy for the defense. Caught in the backfield. It's Haas. The defense wouldn't let him loose there, and it was a completion, but they lost yardage. That's a great example of the defense there tackling the catch. As soon as the big fella caught the ball, down he went, not picking up the first. Third down, and this offense is already in a world of trouble. They could really use a conversion, not to mention multiple scores. Caught in the backfield. It's Armstrong. He couldn't find anywhere to go, and now it's fourth down. They're trying to throw the screen out to the receiver. The defense, though, having none of that. They are just too physical. They're too fast. They force a negative play. And the Ravens. 
Razorbacks will try to pin them back with the punt. Signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 20. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. The give to the back. They knock him down after a gain of three to the 23. It's just simple. Simple first down run, showing your physicality, setting your offense up in a good spot. Got three on first down and second and seven. Wide receiver shows motion. The play action fake. Gets it out fast. And that defense doesn't allow a cutback, and they get him out of bounds after a short gain. This defense is going to have to be careful. Not only do they have to worry about this guy running the football, but they've got to keep their eye on him when he runs routes, too. He is a versatile back. Fairly manageable distance here on third down from the 27. Looking downfield, it's Wegman. Complete with conviction on the crosser. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. Defense is about learning plays. Third down, what do they like to do? How do they do it? So far, the offense having a little bit of success, but the defense now, you got to figure out what they're doing. And the Aggies in the hurry up. Running behind that left side. He had all kinds of company as soon as he got it. He had to fight his way back just to get to the line of scrimmage. That's a big stop for the defense. That running back has had so much success. You're down in the football game. You need to get the ball back to your offense. You create a play like this. This will get the fires going, get the juices going. Now we got to go get a few more. Lost a fire on second down. And the pass is incomplete. Charred loose by the hit. And the big tight end, a lot of times that's a bigger strike zone, a bigger dude, and you can tell they put the hit on him, and that ball came out, and it came to the turf. Nice job playing physical by this defense. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. On third and long, he's going to have to throw for it. Just threw that one away to avoid disaster. And this is why you don't want to get in these situations. Third and long, defense knows it's pass. They're playing pass, playing deep. QB has nowhere to go with the football, so he just throws it away. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. Let's see if he can help the coverage team out with this one. Not going to risk a return here. He'll make the fair catch. The Hogs send that offense back onto the field. They just didn't quite find the rhythm on that last drive, Jesse. They had to punt it. I think they got to be more physical, David. I think up front they got to do a better job getting blocks and establishing this running game. And how easy does football become if you're the more physical team? If you can threaten the run and then, then run play action, it opens up the whole offense at your disposal. That's a way to give yourself some breathing room. Now the second play of the drive from the 36. Got his man quickly. And a good job of coverage by that defense. Just a short pickup. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly. That's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm right now. Line getting set on second down. Out of the gun, the give to the back. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. Man, that D-tackle's a freak athlete. Did you see him come out of his stance and beat the offensive lineman? Getting to the running back. Cat-like quickness. Here they come, facing third and long from the 40. Looking to throw, it's Green. Unloads to the right. He makes a catch. He's got enough to move the chains, and they'll spot it at the 47. That's a really nice look at throw, and I'll tell you, he fits in great with this offense because there's been this philosophical shift recently in the SEC offensively. It used to be you had to run the football. I formation, three yards in a cloud of dust if you wanted to win. But today, though, 
you have got to be able to throw if you're going to win. Think about all the great offensive play callers now in the SEC, all the Heisman Trophy winners that have played recently at the QB position. you got to do it through the air, and this guy in Arkansas gives them a chance. He was not fooled on that one. You know, a lot of times you want to buy space, and you throw this route really when it's off cover. As you can tell, the quarterback is up, ready to come, pounce on that screen, and get the tackle for him. On second down, he'll let it fly. Oh, it's loose! And the defense jumps on it, and they get that turnover. Man, that's a big mistake. And listen, I'm, I'm still going to force through my playmakers. If I'm that quarterback, I'm that OC, I'm, I'm walking over to that guy and be like, listen, it's okay. It's a little bit of a mistake. We're still going to find ways to get you the rock. You're too important to this team not to give you the football. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Here's another opportunity, Jesse, to stretch out this lead after punting last time. I think it goes back to your playmakers, Reese. I think it's finding the guys that have been working for you earlier on in this game and getting them the football. And there's obviously no need to panic. I mean, think about it. You got the lead. You got the football. You got to be smart with the football. Make your plays. Put a good drive together here. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. He's looking to throw. Finds his tight end. He's brought down quickly. Minimal gain there. Still a bit short of the first down. So an example of a tight end doing a little unheralded work to set up a much better third down situation. And I like the QB here, Reese. I like the decision where I understand, let's get this football out, let's get some positive yards, and then get to third down. And we can still have a better situation now because we got rid of the football and took the yards that were there. Couldn't find a man and just had to throw it away to avoid a negative play. Great job by the defense there. They weren't surprised by that play call there on third and short. They were expecting pass. They took everything away and forced the incompletion. Texas A&M will have to boot it away. And the ball will bounce at the four and find its way into the end zone for a touchback. And Arkansas ready to send out this offense. Ball security going to be paramount this time, Jesse. Yeah, and, and sense of urgency, too. They're trailing in this game right now. The turnover wasn't great. So, David, they really got to be able to put something positive together on this drive. Put something positive together. Be aggressive, but don't be reckless. You can't have any more of those turnovers. Looking at a second and short now. Off the play fake. Throwing right. Makes a connection. And they reacted well to the completion, but it was too late to keep them from getting the first down. And, and that's the beauty of running play action. It, everybody sucks up, plays the run, and you get to slip that tight end down the field with a full head of steam, make a big play. Offense lines up for a first and ten from the 43. Looking for a man. It's green. And it's incomplete. If you're going to take a hit like that, you might as well hang on to the ball. Unfortunate with that incompletion, the quarterback and his intended target not on the same page. And the incompletion brings up a second down for this offense. He wants to throw it again. He looks that one in nicely. I love offenses and quarterbacks that are willing to take the easy stuff. Take those easy throws that are guaranteed to get positive yards. Yeah, I'm going to take big shots down the field too. But don't forget, it's easier to pick up second five, third and five, than it is when we start getting those long yarded situations. Guys, this offense is already reeling down. Multiple possessions really need to cash in on this drive. They'll move the chains. Good execution on third down. They've got it at the 41. And listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, I love teams that commit to the run, and when it's successful, keep running the rock. Yeah, David, I think this offensive line right now, they've got a lather going. They're really sort of getting in the groove and flow of this game. They're just getting tremendous push at the point of attack. It seems like every single time they decide to run the ball. And he'll step across the sidelines after making a good gain on that one. 
Running backs just have to be a weapon in the passing game, even for little dump-offs and checkdowns. Yeah, find your matchups. I mean, you think about running back versus a linebacker. We like that matchup in space, and so find ways to get the football to your running back in space where you can break tackles and make things happen because they're just so dynamic. Tackle is made after the first down. Well, the offense knew what they needed to get that first down, so they dial up the running play, and they get just enough to keep the drive alive. The Razorbacks with the first and ten. On the move, it's Green. Using the quick game. You'll take this every time. Five yards on the first down play. Really good concept there to get things going and use the tight end early. Yeah, I mean, just such a great job on first down, setting up an easier second down. Understanding I don't always have to push the ball down the field, but see the tight end, make the throw. No, it's not a big game, but makes life really easy on me on second down. Trying play action. Grab near the sticks. It's hot. He knew exactly where he wanted to go with that one, and they've got enough for the first down. And that's why play action is going to be big in this game. You saw how it just freezed the second level of that defense just for a second and allowed the tight end to work himself vertically down the field. But how about this guy after the catch, right? So hard to bring down. What a weapon. He's got it. And he thought he might be able to wiggle his way into the end zone, but they knock him down at the three. Going to work in the red zone, they can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. He's looking for a man on second down. Quarterback's throwing away. And he runs it in for the score. Touchdown, Razorbacks! Well, the offense shows some life here. and cuts into the lead with that score. That man, they needed it. They had to have something to go right. Listen, still down, but this is a great start to get back in this ball game. Getting set for the point after. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. So it's an 80-yard drive and close the deal with a three-yard touchdown run. Just about set to kick it away. From inside the 10-yard line, he'll bring it back. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. They'll run it out of the shotgun. Got enough for the first. And a really nice run and pick up there before the defense avoided disaster and stopped the really big play. Texas A&M has the lead at the end of the quarter. Three quarters are in the books. Time becomes a factor. Both are trying to hold the lead or cut into it as we take a look at the stats. One more period to go to see who can make the winning plays and come home with the victory. Now on first down from the 30. They'll ride the hot hand. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And the defense is going to have to have more plays like that. He has had a ball game so far, running wild all day long. Defense finally comes up with a stop. They get a little momentum here. Over 100 yards already in this game. So if I'm on defense here, I'm adding more guys to the box, anticipating that they're going to continue to give this guy touches today. They make the stop after a gain of three to the 31. some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. Dropping back, it's Quegman. Throws to the tight end. 
A strike downfield. And they get him out of bounds after an explosive run just chewing up yardage along the way. Maybe this will breathe a little life into this offense, which has been flatlined in the second half. Here's first and ten. Wide receiver coming across in motion. He'll take a shot. But that one falls incomplete, trying to get a chunk play on that one. And that is a huge missed opportunity for the quarterback. You've got your guy wide open in the end zone. You're not under pressure. You just got to hit him. That ball got away. That's one he'd like to have back. Here comes the offense on second down. He's looking to throw. Fires to the middle. Makes the grab. And he will score. Touchdown, Aggie. Well, when you call the wheel route, you need to have the right matchup. And that time they did. It's the linebacker on the running back, one-on-one. -on -one. He uses his speed. Beat him to the outside. That's about as easy as it can get. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point extends the lead to double figures at 10. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And the scoring play comes on a touchdown pass from 22 yards out. Kickoff team lining up to send this one away. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. The Hogs send that offense back onto the field. He wastes no time and comes out throwing. Caught behind the line. It's Armstrong. He's brought down solid pickup, but a little bit short of the first down. This is the moment for this offense to put a drive together. It doesn't matter what's happened up to the point of this game, but you're trailing right now. You've got to put some points up on the board. This is where all 11 guys need to be playing together as one. Trying to convert this second and short. Handoff to the single back. Into a mass of giant bodies. We'll call it a one-yard gain to the 24. Keep it on the ground again here on third down. They'll try to get the first through the air. Can't make the connection on third down thanks to that tough, hard-nosed pass defense, and now it's fourth down. Normally, I would say fourth and short on your own side of the field, you punt the ball away, but we're in the fourth quarter, and they need to keep this drive going to win. I say go for it. And the Razorbacks will call on their punt team. He's getting a lot of work. Fourth time he's punted tonight. He'll settle for some pretty good field position and make the fair catch at around the 35. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. Throws to the wideout. It's caught downfield. You know this sophomore has a big arm, and there were some revolutions on that one. I'll be honest, man. If I had the weapons these guys had offensively, I'd be staying aggressive too. It's what got them to this point. It's why they have the lead here in the fourth quarter. Take some shots when those opportunities present themselves. Leaves it with the running back. Not a whole lot of room there. Three yards, maybe. Second and seven. At this point of the game, the offense has the lead, and the offensive coordinator knows they want to keep running the football. So he's going back, he's looking at his playlist, and he's saying, which runs work the best for me in this game? What can I lean on right here to make sure we win this one? After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Quickly out to the tight end. Really putting together a threat now. They get the first, it's at the 37. And with that pass right there, over three. Yards. That's a good day at the office, being able to execute, doing a good job seeing what's coming, anticipating, taking some shots today, but it's held really strong, put up some good numbers. 
Going to run it. It's Moss. Picks up the first down. And chunk plays are the name of the game, and they get one here before the defense finally makes the stop. The defense didn't blitz. They didn't have everybody in gaps, and the offensive line took advantage at the point of attack, getting some push, opening up a hole, and the offense ripping off a nice run there. To have any chance in the world, this defense has to come up with a stop on first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. It's going to be tough sledding for the offense here. They're trying to ice this game by running the football and leading the clock. They've got a pretty good lead here late in the game, but the defense knows the run's coming, right? So they're going to be loading the line of scrimmage, getting stops like what they just did. It'll be interesting to see what the offense does on this next one. The run up the middle, trying to power to the goal line. Snowed under after a pickup of two. They'll mark it at the eight. It's looking like they're going to have to try to throw this one into the end zone here on third down, David. Quarterback's got to be careful. Can't get greedy because you know these windows, they close fast. Extremely tight windows. Find your big body guys that you know can win in contested situations here on third down. On third and goal, they'll try to throw it in. And it's caught! Touchdown, Aggie! Now they have extended this lead, guys, starting to put the hammer, but sometimes a rivalry game can give you a little of extra fight back. And there can be no panic at this point now. You've worked too hard this offseason, David. They've had this game circled for so long. You've got to play your best football right now and fight back. And you just need something good to happen on this next possession. You've got to get the crowd back into this football game. Big rivalry. Get some emotion. Get some momentum on your side. And that extra point is is a big one as they now have a three possession 17 point lead in the fourth about to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown here he comes from inside his own five nice job by the kickoff team everybody stayed in their lanes and they'll stop him at the 16 and arkansas ready to send out this offense Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really clicked. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit on this drive. And here comes the offense on second down. Looking to throw at Green. He's got his man. And the defense had that one well covered, just a short game there. Well, here's the problem offensively. Because you're trailing by so much so late in the game, the defense now is going to be playing big zone coverages, and they're going to allow you to throw the ball underneath in the middle of the field, rally to make a tackle and bleed the clock. It's going to be hard now for this offense to claw their way back in this one. They're going to go to the air on third and short. Quickly complete. He's out of bounds, but not before picking up enough for the first down. That's tough on the defense there. Third down, you're in zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback, and you're trying to make a break on the ball, but he just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you can do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. The Razorbacks will line it up on first and ten. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. It's a nice adjustment by the defense here. With a big lead in the game, you're putting extra DBs on the field, knowing the offense has to throw to get back in this one in the fourth quarter. So your best cover guys on the field, and they force an incompletion on the last one. Now facing a second and 10 from the 28 after that last incompletion. Oh, picked off. Takes it the other way. The 10. Touchdown, Aggies. The defense puts six on the board with a big-time interception return. And that just might do it. Man, offense needed points, needed points badly. Defense comes up with the big interception, takes it all the way back just to pad their lead a little bit and make this game almost, almost out of reach. They'll try to add another to their lead. 
And with the extra point, they push the lead out a little further. They're lining up to kick it off after the pick six, and that defense will come out feeling it. And it'll be a touchback. The ball will come out to the 25-yard line. The Hogs send that offense back onto the field. Dropping back, it's Green. Oh, he had it right down the middle, and it just squirted right through his fingers, and they missed an opportunity for a nice play on first down. After the incompletion, it's second and 10 from their own 25. He's looking to throw. Grabbed in the middle, it's Jackson. And the catch was one thing, and the run even better. A big pickup on that one. Nice job by the running back there on that angle route against zone coverage. He wasn't in a hurry. He was able to sort of find the soft spot in the defense and just gear down, make himself an easy target. This offense will snap it from the 42 on first and 10. Use the play fake, now to throw. Unloads to the wideout. How about getting the foot down on that throw for the big completion? And man, this quarterback has had a day with that pass. He goes over 300 yards on the day. Really nice job executing, putting up some yards today. Pretty good day for the young man. Offense threatening at the 45-yard line on first and 10. They'll run play action. Keep the quarterback scrambled around with the defense able to scramble him and turn it into a sack. This quarterback has been under duress all game long. He's one of the best in the country, and he's used to having his way. He's the one who's used to dictating to opposing defenses, but that has not been the case in this game. Here we are late. He's still under pressure, taking a sack there. They'll try to keep that sack from wrecking this drive here on second and 15. He's looking to throw. Quarterback just flat missed it. Incomplete. At this point in the game in the fourth quarter, it is going to be tough for this offense to get some completions here because now, trailing by this much, the defense is expecting pass and they're putting a whole bunch of extra DBs on the field to help them out in coverage. They'll try to move the chains on this third and long from the 50. Back to pass, it's Green. Makes the grab on the left. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. And defensively, this is exactly what you want, right? You got the big lead, so you can play big zone coverages. Just keep the ball in front of you. Keep your eye on the quarterback. Rally to the football. Gang tackle. And you're going to win this game. On fourth down, going to the air. Makes a catch past the sticks. Tackled after picking up the first down. Man down on the play as the officials take a break to let him be checked out. Offense picking up steam. First and 10 from the 31. Motion trying to get the defense to show his hand. They're trying to get to it. And he was hit just as he was releasing the pass, and it falls to the ground incomplete. And the quarterback gets hit again. We already know this defense has gotten home to him multiple times in this game. So here you are. You're trailing in the game. Defense knows you're going to throw it. They're pinning their ears back. You can't feel very confident right now if you're the play caller, and certainly if you're the quarterback, that you're going to have time to throw. They keep attacking through the air. Dances away. The quarterback bought as much time as he could, but the defense got to him and sacked him. And I tell you what, this defense, they've heard all about how great this quarterback is. They came in today with a mission, with a purpose. They've been flying around harassing him and making life so hard on this offense. of the drive coming up, but this one will be tough. Third and long. Looking to throw, and he needs a chunk play. And the pressure is coming in, and they get him again. 
it's pretty obvious this defense came into this one knowing they were going to have to play a complete game until there were zeros on the clock, especially against this quarterback. You cannot take your foot off the gas. And that's exactly what they're doing here. Late in the fourth quarter, they're still bringing it, and they get another sack. Coach has no choice here. The offense has to stay on the field, down multiple possessions this late. Fourth down attempt coming. He's got an open man. And it is a chunk play, a huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. You always hear run the route deep enough to get the first down, but if you don't, you better fight your way there, and he did. Yeah, nice job. And listen, catch the football, understand fourth and short, the situation, and then go get that first down. Don't dilly-dally. Don't try to make a home run play. Get past the sticks. Nice job of understanding that situation. Ball start. Ball start. Ball start. So the decision has been made, and the coach will take the penalty. Long drive continues as the offense keeps working the ball down the field. Back to throw, it's Green. Getting some heat. Can't find his man as he took a shot trying to deliver that football, and it'll be second down. Another hit on the quarterback. All day long, this defense has been able to pin their ears back and get after this guy, and because of that, he's never gotten into a rhythm throwing the football, and that's why they find themselves trailing here late in the fourth quarter. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. And he runs through one tackle and picks up a few. Hey, five to six yards a pop. I don't know if you guys are really good at math, but that usually equals a first down every couple carries. So don't forget about the run game. Keep them honest and pound that rock. Boy, they'd love to pick up this conversion and go to work with a first and goal. Trying to move the sticks on third down through the air. He makes a grab. And he's into the end zone! Touchdown, Arkansas! They want to see if they can score the deuce. Powers forward. He gets in there for the two-point conversion, and now we have a two-possession game. That is what they mean when they say ball control, a 14-play touchdown drive. And they finish it by firing one in from the 13 for the score. They are running out of time here. They need to get the ball back. They'll line up for the onside kick. They'd hope to get that thing bouncing around, but the hands team is able to corral it. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. They're in command of this game. Now let's see if they tried to rub a little salt in the wound or happy with getting the W. Yeah, and listen, this, this makes the post-game handshake fun sometimes. If you do choose to rub a little salt in it, keep chugging it, keep scoring. I'm here for it, Jesse. Like, your job is to score points. It's my job to stop it. Keep the foot to the accelerator. Keep trying to play ball. I agree a thousand percent. That's like Steve Spurrier back in the day when I was playing for the Gators. You go and play for him because you want the opportunity to, to throw the ball. So when you get in the game late, you're not handing it off. We were beating Central Michigan by 80-something points. He was still letting us throw the football. It's the defense's job to stop. They'll need to get the ball to the 34 to convert this third down. To give as they work on that clock. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. Fourth time tonight, we've seen this guy come on to punt. Make sure that there's not going to be a return on this one. Ball's out of bounds, and I think they'll mark it right around the 25. He wants to throw. Looking to the big tight end. Catch in the middle. It's hot. And they pick up a better than 30 yards on that completion before the defense brings him down. 
A big game there as they did a tremendous job working the middle of the field. Yeah, and if you're going to complete that throw, Reese, quarterbacks have got to play with anticipation. You've got to get it out of your hands early and give your receiver an opportunity before the defense gets to the ball. Looking to move it through the air. Pocket starts to collapse. Good job to toss that ball out of bounds and avoid the loss. That's a good decision by the quarterback. I know that's not going to come up on the stat sheet. When you're in the pocket, nobody's open. Don't risk turning it over. Just throw it away. Couldn't make the connection on first down. Now here on second. Now the play fake. Looking down the middle. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. Really nice job by the quarterback understanding I needed to throw this ball hard. Like, I got to fit in there tight. And a nice job by the wide receiver wearing it because he really didn't have a choice because he was going to wear that one regardless. They're threatening to score and they'll throw it. Makes the catch into the end zone for a touchdown. And here in the final minute, they still have a chance. And a nice touchdown. Continuing to fight, continuing to play. This one, it's pretty much over. Down multiple possessions this late in the football game. It would take a miracle, but nice job by this offense. Continuing to fight, push the ball down the field, make plays. So that touchdown was big, but just as big, this two-point conversion attempt to try to get it to a one-possession game. Trying to pound their way in. He's into the end zone for the two, and we've got a one-possession game here in the fourth. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they top it off with a 14-yard pass for the touchdown. The clock is just inside, 50 seconds to play. If they don't recover the onside kick, this one is all but over. And this is why you put your hands team on the field most of the time you, when you know it's coming and you put those guys that are great catchers of the football. The first guys, what do they do? They go block. They go blow somebody up. The next guys catch the football, secure it, get your butt on the ground. And most of the time when you do this, the ball game is over.